government administers programs for Indian people. Most of you already know that. What you may not know about is something called the Federal Indian Trust Responsibility. What is it, and why is it important? The Federal Indian Trust Responsibility has its roots in the special relationship that has existed between the federal government and Indian people for more than two centuries. While it is true that much of the fulfillment of federal programs for American Indians and Alaska Natives falls upon the Department of the Interior, every federal agency has a responsibility to protect Indian trust assets. It is of vital importance to understand that every federal employee is expected to carry out the trust responsibility. This presentation will communicate the fundamental duties and standards of the federal trustee. The trust responsibility has emerged from treaties, statutes, executive orders, and other arrangements regarding Indian trust assets. A few key historic events have influenced the development of this trust responsibility. When European settlers came to North America, they negotiated treaties with Indian tribes. Through this practice, they attempted to respect the inherent sovereign rights of the inhabitants to govern their own internal affairs. Since treaty times, the judicial and legislative branches of the federal government have shaped the trust responsibility. With the ratification of the United States Constitution in 1791, Congress set forth the basis of its dealings with tribes in the Commerce Clause. Under those provisions, Congress regulated commerce with tribes, as well as with the states and foreign nations. Treaty powers were expressly reserved to the federal government. Treaties form the basis of the federal government's relations with tribes until Congress formally declared an end to treaty making. In 1831, United States Supreme Court Chief Justice John Marshall suggested that the relationship between the federal government and the tribes was like that of guardian to ward. However, that status did not diminish the character of tribes as distinct political societies separated from others, capable of managing their own affairs and governing themselves. Marshall called tribes domestic dependent nations and established the beginning of the trust relationship. In 1934, Congress reaffirmed the trust relationship by passing the Indian Reorganization Act, which stabilized trust land holdings and permitted new ones. More than a century after Justice Marshall's 1831 opinion, the concept evolved into a trust relationship with a beneficiary, a trust body or corpus, and a trustee. In 1942, the United States Supreme Court determined that the federal government had an affirmative trust obligation to Indians. The trust responsibility is a complex concept, and clarification occurs on a case-by-case -case basis. It applies to all of the various assets found on trust land. It is important that this basic concept be understood because in the course of daily work, federal officials are asked by Indian beneficiaries to provide services to them. Federal officials must be able to distinguish between those services which are trust related and those required for other reasons. Generally speaking, the federal Indian trust is tied to the natural resource base. Although it is complex, three basic features of the trust responsibility can be clearly identified. First, the elements of the trust. Second, the standards required of the trustee. And third, that the Indian trust interest cannot be arbitrarily compromised. The first feature addresses the three elements of a trust. The corpus, the assets to be protected. The beneficiary, the owner of the corpus. And the trustee, the protector of the corpus. The second feature involves what the beneficiaries can expect of the trustee. Unlike a manager of public lands, the federal trustee must meet a higher standard when carrying out duties and responsibilities. The trust standards are based on the fact that the United States hold title for specific Indian beneficiaries. That is much different than land which is held for the use and benefit of all citizens. In order to comply with the higher trust standard, we must be aware that trust lands are not public lands. 
The Supreme Court has made it clear that Indian beneficiaries have every reason to expect the federal trustee's best efforts in providing services on trust assets. The third feature of the trust responsibility is the message that the United States must exercise uncompromised efforts to protect the trust corpus and may not simply accommodate conflicting federal interests. There are four general rules that guide actions in providing trust services. The first is that the trustee is expected to protect the trust corpus from harm. The second rule is that the trustee must take measures to ensure that the trust corpus does not suffer loss, is not wasted, or otherwise diminished. The third rule is that the trustee must also ensure that neither the federal government nor a third party benefits at the expense of the beneficiary. Together, these three rules stress the importance of protecting the trust corpus. When the corpus is not protected, the United States is exposed to potential liability. The fourth rule emanates from the 1983 landmark United States Supreme Court case of United States versus Mitchell. In Mitchell, the court provided detailed guidance on the standards by which the federal government's trust actions are to be judicially tested. Accordingly, the court asks whether the federal government's actions are in good faith and within the realm of their acceptable discretion, or are the federal government's actions arbitrary, capricious, in abuse of discretion, or contrary to law? If the actions are, federal liability follows. Fulfilling the Indian trust responsibility is truly every federal employee's responsibility. We hope that this video will provide a beginning to a better understanding and respect for the trust responsibility which we all have. But this is only the beginning. Continue to learn about and act upon the federal trust responsibility.